Hey guys, my name's Dan. Welcome to Gears and Gadgets. Uh, yesterday I did my oil change on this 2018 Harley Davidson Softail Heritage. This is the 114. And I thought it would be interesting to cut open my oil filter when all said and done and see what actually is inside the oil filter after it's used. Oil changes, uh, tightening down, you know, sp spoke torque and stuff like that. Uh, that's something that I feel comfortable is in my wheelhouse. So I'm just going to walk you through my process and feel free to share your process in the comments down below. If you do something different than I do, let me know. So the first thing I do is I warm the bike up. Uh, motorcycle oil in general is, is thick as molasses and uh, if you're going to try to drain it cold it's, it's just going to take forever and usually while i'm doing that I'll, I'll just take that opportunity to go around the bike check the lights you know just let the bike warm up and, and kind of take a look at some other things uh you know t-clocks that whole thing uh just give a good good overlook of the bike and uh you know before you even get it warmed up check the oil level you know make sure that uh you know it wasn't running low or anything like that just kind of get a good feel of the bike before you start you know tearing into it too much and then from there, I will jack the bike up. And the reason why I do this, you really don't have to jack the bike up. But for me, it's just, it kind of gets the oil flow to the back of the bike. And it also helps get the drain pan underneath there. It just fits easier if the bike is up off the ground a little bit. Uh, I also use this opportunity when I'm out uh, working on the bike to run around and, and check the spoke torque. Uh, you know, it's just all things that I like to do while I'm, while I'm there, you might as well take a look at other things too. And I will include a link in the description down below for the jack that I use here. I searched kind of high and low for this one specifically because I like the fact that it has a locking pin in there so that if the jack were to fail, there's a secondary stop to it so the bike isn't just going to come falling down to the ground. And then go ahead and just under your drain plug. It's super easy. Let the oil run out. Also, again, because motorcycle oil is thick, just make sure you let it drip out until there's really nothing left dripping out or pretty close to it. Uh, if you cap that too soon, you're just going to have all the oil sit in there. Not good. And while the oil is draining, this will be a great time for me to throw in. If this is your first time tuning in, please click that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. And now that that's out of the way, while all the oil is draining, it's a good time to take your drain plug, clean it up, clean up the threads, inspect the magnet that's on there, make sure you don't have any like real big chunks of metal or anything on there. Uh, you'll have a little bit of debris that's kind of built up on that. That's what it's designed to do, is to hold that and you know basically helps prevent that from going into your oil filter uh, my drain plug was in pretty good shape uh, so there wasn't too much to worry about there just clean it up replace that o-ring and put it back in place then we will get into the oil filter super simple i use the knn oil filters i can get them on amazon i'll include the link in the description down below for that uh, as well you know the jack is in there too uh, if you guys want to check that stuff out uh, the knn oil filters are just they're really good they're a proven filter people love them not a whole lot of hate out there about them so i run with them also has this convenient little nut on the end to remove them so i, I, I like to use these filters but another trick that i learned i don't even know who to give credit to it because it's just in the course of browsing through the interwebs i found someone else mentioned this this heavy duty tinfoil trick i like to do this it, it worked really well the two times that i've changed oil on this bike uh, you just basically put it in underneath the oil filter make sure it's it's really tucked in there good you're still going to get a little bit of drip by but from what i read even the other uh, little catch cans from harley that they have the little plastic trays those drip too so it's just kind of the nature of the beast uh, where the filter is located on these bikes but the tinfoil does a really good job of catching the majority of it uh, then you just go around and make sure that you clean up any excess oil that's in on there then you'll take your new filter just put a little bit of oil around that o-ring uh, it just kind of helps you get the oil the filter off next time spin it on there you want to spin it on until it makes contact then they tell you in the manual not to use any tools but if you're like me uh, in the shade tree mechanic type setup, your hands are going to have oil on them. So good luck being able to get that other half to three quarter turn they tell you to do. So for me, shoot me, I use a wrench and I just turn it that half to three quarter. I like to make sure it's snug down there. I'd rather wrestle it off than develop a leak because it was too loose and I was dripping oil and picked it up on my rear tire and slide out. So I, I like to just make sure it's on there a, a little snug, uh, more towards that three quarter uh, specification. And once you get all that on there, it's, it's really simple. You just 
At that point, top off when they tell you put your four quarts in first, this bike takes five. You put your four quarts in, let the bike heat up so that you can actually check the level, and then start to, to add oil to get it up to the level that it belongs at. Uh, this oil, I find in my experience, is if you really want to get crazy about the oil level, it really fluctuates with temperature. You will notice quite a bit of fluctuation, at least I have, uh, to the point where today I'm actually going to be going home and probably siphoning out a little bit. It's it's actually overfilled now, whereas yesterday, uh, you know, I didn't apparently let it heat up long enough. So, uh, just out of my neurotic uh, impulse, I will siphon a little bit out of there. I don't think it's really that big of a deal, but I'll do it. Now, to get into cutting this filter open, first I want to say thank you to my 2,800 subscribers because back in the day when there was only six of you, this would have been a very difficult uh, explanation to my wife as to why I was cutting open an, a used oil filter in my kitchen sink with a Dremel. So since I do have 2,800 of you, which is a, a good enough number apparently to justify these kinds of actions to your wife, I was able to do this video. So who knows, maybe when I get 30,000 of you, my wife will let me park my bike in the living room. But I do know that I can guarantee you that 2800 is not enough to, to pull that off. So now, uh, getting into cutting the oil filter open was actually a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be. At first, I just tried to take this little uh, sawzall, hand sawzall that I have, which I thought was just going to cut through this thin oil filter uh, like butter. And surprise, this K&N filter right off the bat kind of threw me for a loop. It was way thicker than I thought it was going to be. So it's time to pull out the Dremel and do what the Dremel is designed to do, which is cut things really, really well. So that's what I did. I just cut my way around this filter with no real rhyme or reason as to how to do it. I uh, just kind of went at it. Now, when I was pulling this apart, I, I really was expecting to see some, not larger, but more aluminum flake from this motor. This is my 5,000 mile oil change. So I went through the initial service at 1,000 miles, which I didn't uh, cut the oil filter open then. I should have, but I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, but I did expect, being only my second oil change, to pick up quite a bit of, of aluminum shavings or you know cylinder wall type shavings. Uh, and, and I'm surprised as I opened this thing up and started pulling the filter apart, I didn't see anything really. I mean, there's a couple little flakes you can see here or there, but I was just expecting to see more. Uh, I did squeeze out a little bit of oil and just kind of see what I would find. And I, again, I just didn't really see all that much, but I am very, very impressed with this oil filter's capability as far as just tearing it apart gave me a, a ton more confidence to run these oil filters forever unless there's some sort of design change. Uh, I found this to be a very, very robust oil filter that, while if it's very difficult to tear apart, that means it's probably pretty good to be on the bike uh, as far as the front line of defense. Now, Revzilla did a teardown of these filters before they were used, and I'll link that uh, up above if you want to check that out. And uh, he goes through all the parts and pieces, so I'm not going to get into that in this video. It's been done better than I can do it. So just go check out Revzilla's channel uh, for that video again, uh, linked up above. He makes out a, a lot of points about the, the competitors and where they cheap out on parts. And again, that oil filter is on the front of the bike, so if a stone or something were to come up and impact that, you want it to be robust. So uh, I, I just wanted to share with you guys my experience with this oil change and the subsequent tearing into the oil filter. I thought it was interesting enough to put a video together on it. Uh, you know, oil changes, uh, maybe not that unique, but uh, tearing the oil filter apart, I didn't really see a whole lot of that uh, going on on YouTube. So again, I thank you guys very much for tuning in. If this is your first time, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel, and we will see you next time. I also want to mention that this uh, Mobile One synthetic V-Twin oil for these uh, for the Harleys, I find is cheapest at Walmart. So pro tip, if you are looking to change your oil with this Mobile One V-Twin synthetic 20W50, uh, Walmart is the best place by a few dollars a quart actually uh, in my experience.